Okay, so we have another Dakin outdoor unit that is showing an E3 fault intermittently. And I've just had this running with my gauges, my pipe clamp and the Dakin tool for like over an hour. And the pressures have been perfect that whole time and the unit's been running perfect that whole time. And of course, whilst I'm here, it hasn't tripped out. So it's another intermittent fault. Um, I don't like doing this, but to be honest, it's, it's the only way that you can find out what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect the high pressure switch, like you've seen in another video loop it so it doesn't have a high pressure switch and we're just going to run it for like a couple of days and see if it trips out again because the customer is saying that it's tripping out regularly like it will trip out like four times a night um so like after like a night or two if it doesn't trip out then i'm confident that that switch will be faulty i've seen it before i've made a video on it before but at the same time, if I've disconnected that and tonight they run it and it trips out again, then I know that it's not the um, switch. So, first things first, turn the power off. Take my little tool off. It's the only way you can um, diagnose intermittent faults. And I've had a job in the past where I did this exact method and it was in fact the high pressure switch that was faulty. And people were like, why didn't you just take the high pressure switch off and check the continuity? And I did do that and it was perfect. Um, that's what I mean, it's intermittent. It only happens sometimes. All right, so I've just disconnected the high pressure switch and this should be a closed circuit. So that should definitely be a closed circuit. So that's odd because I had that running for like, honestly like over an hour and it didn't trip, but it had a fault from the past that was saying that that had tripped the E3 fault. And I turned it off and now it's just not working. Interesting. Anyway, I'm going to um, just loop it and we'll order another one. So I'll just use these piggyback connections. Always make sure there's no bare metal. So this is the second switch, high pressure switch on Dakin that I've had fail in like the last four months. Such a like random thing to fail. You know, there's not much to it.
like the board there's so much technical stuff that could go wrong but it's this little simple switch that is failing it's very odd So that's the switch, that's faulty, the problem is you need to reclaim all the gas just to um, change it which is annoying. So for something that's so cheap it becomes a little bit expensive because of all the labour labor and gas and whatnot. Anyway, I'm going to show the customer, pack this up, get out of here. Okay, so I'm back here and I've got a new high pressure switch. So I'm going to change that over. Um, unfortunately, to do that, I need to take all the gas out, but it's all right. We'll get it done. Okay, so that's the old one, that's the new one. Nothing, no continuity. New one. Nothing. So whenever you're testing these, they should always have continuity unless the pressure exceeds, um, it's like 3,450 kPa from memory. But basically if it's not, you know, in a high pressure state, it should always have continuity. That's faulty. Okay, so I've cut the old faulty high pressure switch out. I've cleaned the pipe with emery cloth and I put the new one in position. Now I've cable tied a lot of cables out of the way. I also use um, fibro as like a shield. I highly recommend you just get some scrap pieces of fibro and leave them in your car. It's so handy. And I also just take off the flare nut. Um, sometimes even when you've reclaimed it all, there'll still be a little bit of pressure in the system. So basically just take my time, prep it all, and then do a nice, neat solder joint without burning everything. is obviously a lot easier when you're using two hands. So 
I'll say check your solder joins. Look, it's not the easiest thing to do, solder in here, but if you just take your time and yeah, strap everything back, it's not that bad. And obviously if you use an oxy acetylene, it'll be easier. I just couldn't be bothered carrying that all the way down to this uh, parking lot. So now we just connect everything back and vac it. So we need four kilos of R410 and an additional charge of 1.6 kilos. So 5.6 kilos. We're weighing it in. six kilos so because there's no extension lead point down in this car park I had to like get power from here to run the reclaim unit uh, recovery unit and back pump but um like this is pretty common so i've just got a lead that's already cut off i've already cut off the end it just stays in my car for jobs like this 
Obviously the power's off right now. Should have done this already, but I forgot. But yeah, everything's lit up. Just gotta go test it. So because this was a VRV, I had to wait um, like 12 minutes or something for it to do its thing. Now that that's done, I'm just going to put it through a test mode. So you would not normally need to do this on a normal ducted. This is just some extra steps for a VRV or a multi. So I've just put it into a test mode so it's gonna do its thing um, and it just like you just have to do it because there's more than one indoor unit and it needs to find out how many indoor units there are and whatnot so now I've got to wait like another 10-15 minutes 